Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. Go to carrylutz.com and sign up for 30 free micro trainings on financial survival. Great news. We've got a sponsor. This show is now brought to you by Miles Franklin. And when it comes to protecting your wealth, you know there's nothing better than gold and silver. That's what I'm buying. I hope you're doing the same. And once you make the decision to buy gold and silver, there's no better place than Miles Franklin. Look, they've been in business 22 years. And the reason I'm a customer is because when you buy, they ship. Go to milesfranklin.com or call them at 800-822-8080 to get a free quote. If you own gold and silver and you're wondering what is with the volatility in the markets, how do they go down and seldom ever go up as fast? Well, Bill Murphy of Gata.org has been fighting the fight for the past 13 years to find out exactly what the government's role is in precious metals price manipulation. Hey, Bill, welcome back to the Financial Survival Network. Uh, good to be here, Kerry. You've been fighting this fight for 13 years. Like you said the last time, when you started, people just kind of thought uh, you'd been watching too much TV or read too many JFK conspiracy theories. Now what's the response? Well, we're making some progress because the gold cartels, we call them, which is a bunch of bullion banks and the U.S. government, the Fed, the Treasury, and so on, some foreign banks, have been so obvious. Uh, we've never seen anything like it, what's, what it's been this year. And every day, uh, they do something that's so easy to spot, if anybody has any kind of open mind. And uh, with their really blatant attacks, like they did on, uh, on our leap year day, and, then, and since then, I mean, they've it, it, it been like we call waterfall effects. Just go straight down in minutes, and they attack when few people are around and age of trading hours, and it's, it's ridiculous. So we have two really blatant examples, the leap year, leap day massacre, as I called it. And we have last week where on Tuesday, gearing up for the holiday, thinly traded markets, employment numbers coming out. It's really beginning to follow a pattern that, that any, anybody can recognize if they just look at the charts, right? Well, and just follow what God presents to them. I, mean, I, I have a commentary every day, the Metropole Cafe, I lay it out, what's happening. And it's, uh, they keep doing the same things over and over again. They're very repetitive. And yes, as you said, they do certain things around certain times, like around jobs reports and things like, like this. And basically, gold is looked at as the messenger of uh, financial market health, to, make, to keep it simple. And so what, they keep shooting the messenger because they're trying to disguise what, the, what they're doing inflation-wise and money printing and quantitative easing. And they don't want the barometer to scream, hey, look, this is uh, uh, it's getting out of control. And and what of that? On on Leap Day, they sold hundreds of millions of ounces within literally minutes. And it's so blatant, it shows me a level of desperation in their actions that hasn't been present in the past. Well, again, we agree with you there because that's what we I know in my commentary all the time that we've never seen it in 13 years where they are so obvious almost every day. I mean, they sell around 3 a.m. New York, New York time, or the shares act lousy in advance, and gold follows, or you see gold and silver will open in a day, and all of a sudden silver starts to weaken for no apparent reason, and then uh, within a half hour, an hour later, you know, gold follows it down. Yeah, we saw it this morning. Yes, we did. Right. Uh, We're you on know, gold April. was flying, and silver was up unchanged, a couple pennies higher, and it started to fall, and it could fall more, and then... Uh, Every time gold rallied, you know, up, uh, 15, 16, 18 bucks, and then it would stop cold. The next thing you know, silver's down 20 cents, 30 cents. The next thing you go, go falls 12 bucks. Right, and this is April 9th, and there's no let up in sight. So if you if you're an owner of precious metals, if you own the mining stocks, what do you do? Do you just sit around and kind of wait for this thing to break? Or well, it's going to be, I guess, yeah. a good question. But one, to take advantage of when, it, when they pull these rates to buy physical uh, gold and silver or coins on a, on a dip. And the shares have been an abomination for years now. And, and they're grossly oversold. And all 
I know is, at least if we're right, we've been right on gold itself for 12 years, these shares are just going to go absolutely berserk. And as bad as they've been, it will be that good on the upside. And from my experience, people that are not in it, you know, you know, won't, uh, won't, won't participate in the move. So while short term we suffer or don't make any money at all, uh, it'll, be, it'll be that much more will be made uh, when the move takes off. I mean, it's going to be spectacular. Yeah, I heard one guy, I think his name is uh, Biderman, he said, silver is going to be an awful investment until one day when you wake up and it's going to be the best investment around. And I mean, not that it's been an awful investment for the past 12 years, going from $4 to up to f almost 50 and now retreating back uh, in the mid-30s, it doesn't look that bad to me, but still, at some point, the attacks are going to end or they're going to just use it all up and they're not going to be able to go any further where the buying is just going to rush in there and send it to the moon. Well, if we're correct, yes, that's what's going to happen. And, and that's the other point. It can happen overnight where something, you know, the world changes overnight and uh, uh, the tax, you know, and then the attacks on gold and silver will be over because it will be hopeless for them. There's an article that we're, we've got on the financialsurvivalnetwork.com that Chris Powell of GATA wrote about the impact that GATA has had upon the markets and continues to have. Briefly, what do you think the biggest contribution of GATA has been? I think it's just an awareness uh, of what the gold price, silver, gold, gold price suppression scheme and silver too is all about and that it's, uh, it, it's an active part of uh, uh, market policy by the government. Everyone knows they're manipulating the bond market. And the plunge protection team is there with the counterparty risk management group and others in the stock market. And, and they're all over gold and silver. And I think we've been pounding away long enough where people have begun to understand this. And, and also, it, it's important for investors to know so they don't get discouraged because when they keep attacking like this, uh, the prices of gold and silver are artificially low. And they've been this, that's why it goes up every year. All they can do is manage the retreat. So instead of panicking uh, when gold and silver get hit like this, it's a time to uh, buy more if you have the capital available. Absolutely. And what about central bank purchases of the metals? I have a theory. I don't believe it's just the developing world central banks that are buying. I think every central bank in the world is hiding their buying is there any indication that the developed world's central banks are buying metals? Uh, well, there's certain announcements, you know. We know the Chinese and buying. We spotted that years ago. We actually spotted it five years before anyone else did. And other central banks are buying here and there. And uh, I can't say all of them are, no, but there's certain ones are. And the supply-demand situation is such that uh, it makes it tough for this gold cartel. I mean, years ago, uh, European central banks uh, were selling four and 500 tons a year. That's a lot of gold, and they yes. stopped now. They're, they're, they're not selling any. So it's quite a switch, and it's taking away from a lot of the, the ammunition that the this gold cartels, we call it, has to continue their attacks uh, as time goes by. Yeah, and conversely, with silver, there is or are no national stockpiles. The U.S. used to have a couple of billion ounces, but now there's no government out there stockpiling silver except perhaps the Chinese who aren't selling it. So, in a lot of ways, it's more susceptible to a sudden uh, dramatic increase in demand and prices, isn't it? Yeah, it can be. We don't know sometimes J.P. Morgan's the big silver short, and they continue to say that their head of their commodity department, Blythe Masters, says, oh, that they're hedged. Well, we just don't buy that for one second. Yeah, that... And, uh, and uh, I think it's just a, a total ruse. I mean... It's just, I just, there's no way that they have that physical amount of gold sitting in vaults in London. Or, I mean, they're not a producer. So, you know, and I, I don't know how much they're doing it for clients. And, of course, our, our client, if we say they are, it's the United States government uh, is the client. Uh, but it, it, it can set up a situation that's explosive because, as you just said, they, you, you know, we don't have, the U.S. government doesn't have the, the silver anymore on hand. And how they pull off some of these things and what they do, it's remarkable. Right. So you saw that interview with her on CNBC the other day. What was your general impression of her demeanor? Well, when she talked about the hedging things and they don't do any directional trading, I, you, you choke. I mean, it's just because we know from in front of the CFTC two years ago, we gave them um, emails from one of our, our traders in London, Andrew McGuire, is a GATA supporter. And 
he went to the CFTC in advance and said when J.P. Morgan was going to attack uh, ahead of time and, and how they were signaling other traders to go along with him, and they did it. And then they got together in, in their local pub and laughed at all the speculators they ripped off. I mean, and we told all this to the CFTC, and they've done nothing about it. So when I look at her, I just, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, she's lying through her teeth. Yeah, and it, it's really kind of amazing to think about it that it's so obvious, it's blatant. Anybody can see exactly what's happening, and it just demonstrates that the U.S. has become a lawless society. Unless you're out there street crime, holding people up, or if you're in occupying Wall Street. Well, one thing for sure that the U.S. government and, and, and the big banks are in cahoots, and, and uh, that went, you know, they take the risk, they make a lot of money, then when they screw up, the government bails them out, and the rules and regulations are put their way, and, and uh, I mean, well, first of all, I mean, the obvious one is that J.P. Morgan's the Fed's bank, so I mean, it's, that's, that, uh, most people know that, and it's just uh, it's pervasive what they do for these big banks, and it's uh, very incestuous. Yeah, yeah, that it is. And until this thing blows up, it's just going to continue. Then. Yeah, it's going. You know, you know, we go two steps forward and one back all the time. But as I said, when we started, silver was like four bucks, and gold was two hundred and sixty dollars an ounce. And so, it, uh, I think gold has gone up. What it's already, uh, whatever, say twelve years in a row. Uh, I don't think any asset class in American history has done that over that a period of time like that. It's unprecedented. Yeah, yeah. It's to do it on a yearly basis, over and over again. Yeah, and ahead of inflation, even even the real rate of inflation, the purchasing power of the metals has gone up ahead of the rate of inflation. That's the other amazing thing. People always say uh, it's just preservation of wealth and insurance against inflation and governmental improprieties and fiscal insanity. But what we've seen here over the past 12 years is dramatic increase in purchasing power of the metals as well. That's right. And it should continue for years to come. Yeah, that's I think people need to understand because you know, yeah, okay, so on the one hand, you want to protect your wealth. On the other hand, you'd like to see appreciation. And here, when you see the real purchasing power of the metals go up, that is a real return on your investment. And there's not a lot of other stuff in the past 12 years where you've seen that. No, there's nothing close, and especially, you know, interest rates being so low or non-existent almost. Uh, uh, the gold and silver are the place to be. That's what the time to buy is when... The gold cartel attacks and the speculative loans in the futures market and elsewhere are, are, are pitching their positions. That's the time to buy. Absolutely. And fortunately, I became aware in 2008 and kept buying at that point. But I also bought some in 1999 as well. So, so Bill, hey, thanks for being on with us again and and helping to bring a little light to what's been going on recently. If people want to learn more about you and Gatto, where do they find you? Well, I want to go to Gatto. Chris Powell, my colleague, puts out a great free newsletter at uh, gatto.org. And then uh, I write a daily commentary, a subscription site at La Metropole Cafe, L-A-M-E-T-R-O-P-O-L-E-C-A-F-E.com. And people can sign up for a two-week free trial and see if the value up to them. All right. And we've got a link up to your site, Tagata and La Metropole on FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. We'll check in with you in another four to six weeks and see when this dam on the price of metals has broken. Well, hopefully by then the prices will be a lot higher. Yeah, from your from your mouth to God's keyboard. You got it. Hey, be well. Thank you. Thanks, Greg.